Hi guys, okay, in this particular video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss just loosely um, about a certain concept that you have to get accustomed to when compiling, which is known as directives. All right, so directives are instructions, but not like the instructions for the pick itself. Whereas the, the instructions for the pick um, that we're seeing from the pick data sheet, uh, instructions for the pick to do um, directives, on the other hand, are instructions for your compiler, i.e. in this case, um, they're going to be instructions for MPSM. Okay, so um, the first question is, just like in the PIC and S data sheet, where can you find information about these kinds of directives? Well, you can actually look in the help files for your um, assembler. So just like high tech, C had its own help sheet, so does MPSM. Um, one place to go and look for it is just online on the microchip website or alternatively if you have MPSM installed on your computer you can just go to the directory tree wherever it's actually installed and then um, take a look because all compilers um, when they are downloaded they actually um, install help files alongside so yeah I've just got my program files to MPSM suite and I can find the help file for um, MPSM. So if I just go into the table of contents, I could actually just drop down and here we go, a bunch of directives. And it tells you a lot more about it here. But what I'm going to do is going to skip on to or the listing of all the directives by alphabetical type. And there you have it, each one of the directives that MPSM can have. And therefore, you can actually type in into your source file um, in order to command it to do different things. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to close off that. And I'll start with the first directive I'll tell you about, which is the end directive. Now, the end directive is quite straightforward in that all it tells you, all it tells the assembler is there is no more code happening after it. So you could write any kind of code before it, but there's nothing else behind it after it. So it just tells to stop taking any more code after that line. <laughs> so see, pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit build. Let's see what happened. And there you have it, build succeeded. Okay, without the end directive, you wouldn't have a build succeeding. So MPSM will actually take a blank file. So the question is, what does a blank file actually become when you um, build it? Well, let's take a look by let's view the disassembly listing whenever it comes up but you see it's all completely blank let's look at the program memory there we go ah that's a bit better so you can see what's going on you see each one of the lines actually just has the upload tree ff so if i look at the disassembly this is just a bunch of no, op, no ops straight through this entire file. That is black. Yeah, they're all just blank no operations. Okay, so if we do a blank file, the we know that the pick is going to get filled with just a bunch of no ops that does nothing. All right, so let's try to make this. Um, a bit more usable. Let's actually type one or two lines of code. All right. So let's let's just move LW um, directory three just for the sake of having an instruction. And let's move WF that uh, I don't know maybe a register somewhere at twenty maybe hex twenty five something like that. Let's try rebuilding that and then let's take a look again at the program memory. I notice what happens here is that the move lw and move wf actually comes into the um, program memory okay so that's great but um we have another problem now our problem is that it went and went our first instruction automatically just went to address zero in program memory question is do we want that well, it could just be fine and we can leave that alone. But that brings us to our second 
instruction, sorry, or a second directive that I want to tell you about, which is known as ORG, right? ORG takes an operand and it's actually an address. This ORG directive, what it does is it tells you where to put the line immediately thereafter in program memory. So uh, let's say I had um, hex 10 after that ORG when I build it and then look at my program memory. I have to scroll all the way down to hex 10, which is line 17 the 17th location in program memory, um, there are my instructions, one after the other, okay? That's what ORG does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna leave it explicit as start my program from ORG um, 00, zero. bring that back, all right. Which brings me to the next instruction that I wanna tell you about that is called list. So list p equal 16f877, right? What a list does is it tells um, MPLAB that this code is being um, assembled for the 16f877 processor. That's in a nutshell. There's actually three ways which you can um, tell MPSM this. First way is in your source file. The second way is through the menus, which we've been doing before. I configure select device. And the last way is from the command line, which I'm not gonna touch at all um, in these videos. But just a just note, it's it's another way you could actually tell it. I like to actually make sure, even though even though the um there is a setting in in MP. Um, in the MPLAB interface to tell uh, MPSM that we're using 16F877. Uh, usually best practice says that you wanna put this in your source file just to make sure that everything's clear. And then with the source file, you know, if you ever give it to another programmer, they know that, well, we're actually gonna use this processor. Um, so just for transparency sake, we're gonna keep that as the first line and, um, in any source file that you're gonna, you're gonna create, okay? All right, so that brings us a list. All right, the next instruction, sorry, the next directive I want you to get accustomed to is something known as EQU. All right, now EQ tends to tire people a lot because, because of the way it's used, okay? Just remember that EQU defines a label. It just create it just gives a number a symbolic meaning. So since we are learning about numbers in class, you know that numbers have some sort of meaning attached to it. And well, I guess the best way to show you is through an example. Um, so I'm going to create some lab a label called sumnum using the EQU directive. And I'm going to create another label, which is, I'm going to call reg A. Uh, that's EQU0x25. All right. So what this is actually going to say is, what this says to MPSM, the assembler, is that wherever I see the label sumnum in the program to follow, I'm just going to replace it with this number here. Similarly, wherever I see this, um label reggae i'm going to replace it with this number here okay so i'm going to do i'm just going to change this to some num and i'm going to change this to reg a okay so then when i build this and i look into this assembly all the way back at zero because i moved it back see here in my source file, I just have move LW sum num, and I moved over here for and it actually went and replaced it, right? Well, it just shows up like this in the disassembly, but it's actually replacing it under the hood as 2.5. If you want to verify, you can look at the opcode 
and um, le- uh, and actually realize that it's actually replacing the the operand with with hex two five. Um, so why why does this tie people up? Well, usually some some people get it into their heads that well EQ is a register because very often they use it to name a register somewhere in the general purpose registers, but that's not true. Really and truly, what EQ does just defines a label as a number. How you use that label in your piece of code um, and the particular instruction you use it with it defines well how how it's going to be used. So for move WF, I use the number 25, well, the hex 25, um, as an address. So therefore, it's going to treat this number as an address because this instruction, move WF, expects an address. So it's just going to treat that number as an address. There's nothing special about the label as such. For example, I could actually put that same label, or A, alongside this instruction. But this instruction, with the move LW is expecting a literal. And because it's expecting a literal, it's going to treat that hex to five as though it's uh, uh, an immediate um, an immediate operand. So therefore, um, these names that use the labels, they're just primarily just to help us keep it, keep straight to what we're going to use that number four in, in the code that we're writing. And that's where EQ um, helps us out a lot. It just allows us to write a code that looks a lot more meaningful to us as humans because it gets a lot very hard sometimes to keep track of um, a whole bunch of numbers, and that's that's basically it for the EQ, um, the EQU directive, right? So whatever you do, do not tie it up. Do not think that EQ just defines registers. Do not think that EQ just defines labels. It, it, it defines. Um, immediate um, operands, uh, literals. All it is is it's just going to replace the label on the left-hand side in your code with the number on the right-hand hand side of EQ throughout. Okay. Right. And that, of course, brings me to the last instruction I'm going to show you in this video, which is called include. So you have to use include with some angle brackets, and then I'm going to say p16f877. I can put dot inc. Oops, sorry, I had that bad. Not p is big. All right. All right. So for you to understand what that was, is I'm going to add as header files, and I'm going to look in um, where mplab is stored. Uh, sorry, installed. Um, so. I'm going to look in MPSM and directly in MPSM. Oh, it's actually P. P16F877. There we go. Dot ink. Right, so I've added it. So this last this last directive, which is include, um, it's it's a copy and paste directive. And what it does is that the contents of whatever file it gives here is copied and pasted as though it was right here on this line. Okay? So the question becomes what's actually in this file? Which is why I added it here just for your reference. All right. So it has some random things on top. So, okay, here we go. This has W E Q U, this F E Q U dot, and the F equals that, port A E Q dot. Port B EQ, EQ that, etc., etc., etc. So, what someone did for you is they sat down and they um, created a whole bunch of EQs for this particular processor. So, all of those um, registers, for example, that are in that are in your data memory map, they EQ'd each one of them and gave them a num and gave them a number to be associated with. And that number is the address of where it's stored. So therefore, if you wanted to move something into one of those special purpose registers, you can just use the label from this file. And that's it. So you don't actually have to keep all the numbers in your head or keep referring to the big data sheet. You can actually just use the labels. And that makes your life a whole lot more easy. Okay, I think I've droned on quite enough about directives. 
um, I'm going to leave you as homework to go and look at two other directives that may um, may become handy to you at a later point. The first directive that you should go and look at is a directive known as bank cell. And the second directive that I want you to go and look at is something called C block. Both are pretty useful and you may end up using them at later points. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.